Hello, I will talk about the prediction of the lead bin, and this is a study, a EG study that we conducted here at Ritmo to investigate how the pre brain predicts the temporal precision of a rhythmic event. So neural entrainment offers a very parsimonious explanation um, how temporal prediction of events that are periodic could be performed. And this concept is visualized here in this schematic figure, uh, how the phase of the oscillation uh, resets to the external input. But actually, most environmental rhythms are not strictly periodic, but rather quasi-periodic. Uh, and um, for example, um, a speech a syllable could be stretched out in time or a musical note. And then it is more beneficial to um, widen the window of the perceptual processing. And uh, since the regularity of rhythmical events are quite uh, uh, variable in the environment, it is crucial for the brain to be uh, flexible and to be able to dynamically adjust sensorial temporal predictions. And this could be realized via a top-down drive, as is also in the schematic figure visualized here on the, as a top-down drive on the oscillation. And actually, research in human rhythm research has already um, investigated this as, as uh, studies by Anne Danielsen et al. So they already show that perceived, the perceived precision of a beat is, um, is, um, is actually, it varies systematically with the acoustic features. So you can measure the um, temporal precision by uh, via uh, the perceptual center, it's also called the P-center, and this P-center concept is known from speech research, and it depicts um, um, how, um, how, um, yeah, how uh, s s sound is localized, perceptually lo localized in time. So it doesn't coincide necessarily with the onset of the tone as it is depicted here, um, and it can and can vary and can have a range. So this has been put forward by music uh, research to also that in uh, the perception or that the perception of a beat is also actually not uh, defined as a point in time, but rather uh, um, as a probability distribution or bet better defined as a probability distribution as it is uh, visualized here on the right uh, side. And um, this concept has been referred to as the beat bin by uh, uh, Danielsen et al. So if you ask a person to localize a sound in time, then it will be more precise when it is uh, uh, a sharp sound that has a short rise time. And it will vary a lot more when uh, the person is asked to localize a, um, a sound in time um, that is more smooth and uh, has a longer rise time. And you could say the person is rhythmically more tolerant, or you could say the perceptual um, precision is lower in that case. So in this study, um, we are interested in how the prediction of the auditory stimulus shape affects the temporal prediction of sounds. And we want to understand how the brain predicts rhythmic events with varying temporal precision, and if this mechanism is under top-down control. Um, so the question is, how the brain predicts the temporal precision of a beat. To investigate this, we used the cueing paradigm and we presented sound cues um, um, that uh, um, informed the participant about the acoustic shape of a target sound at the end of the sequence. So thereby, we induced two different levels, uh, a high precision prediction and a low precision prediction of the, of the target at the end of the sequence. So we make use of this uh, 
uh, we made use of uh, these uh, results that already have shown how these acoustic features influence the precision of the perception. And um, the participants had to detect the delay of a target sound at the end of the sequence. And uh, the, um, the sound cues uh, were, in most of the cases, the sound cues were valid. So the, the cue, the, the acoustic shape of the cue matches the target sound. I will um, play some examples to you so it um, gives it gets a bit more uh, uh, easier to understand. But it's uh, actually a quite so uh, a quite simple paradigm. It uh, in the invalid case, the um, Q is not uh, does not match the target sound. So you could also say in this case the listener predicted the wrong temporal position. I would say um, a valid high precision prediction condition, an example. And an invalid low temporal precision prediction. has its own life now. <laughs> I should <probably> stop it. <laughs> Maybe by selecting the slide. Okay. <laughs> we got out. <laughs> um, and the behavioral results show that the information of the cue is indeed used by the, uh, by the brain and it, it, it modulates the delay uh, detection performance. So the anticipated temporal precision affects the perceptual sensitivity for the high precision target, as you can see here. So I this, if the listener actually expects uh, a low precision sound, but the actual presented target was a high precision sound, then the delay detection performance decreases. And we don't see this effect for the low precision target, um, which is not affected by the cue. Um, so, or the performance is not affected by the cue. And this might be a ceiling effect since the temporal precision of the target is already low. It's not detrimental to prepare for high precision uh, target sound. So um, that might explain this result. And in the classic sense, the, as we have seen uh, in other talks and also in the first slide, the phase of um, reset of an ongoing slow oscillation is considered to be the mechanism underlying neural entrainment to external rhythms. However, it has been also re it has been proposed uh, and shown that the motor system is also recruited during rhythm perception, even during passive listening, and that temporal predictions might be, might be encoded, encoded in uh, the better activity, which entails higher frequencies between 13 and 30 hertz. So the idea is that external inputs could also be linked with rhythmic motor activity that resets the neural activity in sensory areas. So this has been referred to as a covered form of active sensing. So the motor system um, might be more flexible in predicting temporal dynamics at a small time scale of tens to 100 milliseconds. So here you see better power activity between 15 and 25 hertz. And during the entrainment period, starting with the first entraining sound here, uh, until target presentation. And for some electrodes, we see that this beta activity seems to align with the entraining sounds, at least for the high precision prediction. So in red, you see um, that all the trials where they, um, th um, a, a cue was presented that um, predicted a sharp sound or high precision sound. And before, in the last entrainment interval, before target presentation, this beta power is significantly 
increased for the high precision prediction. So this is uh, in line with other studies that have shown that um, um, that lead perception and also temporal prediction is related to better activity, as for example the work by Fujioka et al. or uh, Morion. And um, we also were interested in to see how if there's a spectral modulation of this better power time series. And interestingly, there's a peak at um, uh, in the delta range. Um, um, between 0 0.6 and 3 hertz, which coincides with the entrainment rate. And it is uh, significantly higher for the high precision prediction. And in addition, we also uh, found a higher phase locking, so um, a higher intertrial phase coherence. And this was in the beta range, but also in the alpha frequency range. And the beta power also correlated positively with um, behavioral detection performance. So here you see beta power in the last entrainment interval, but it correlated negatively with uh, peak center variability. So people also, we also um, measured the peak center variability to all the sounds. So this shows this tight relation between beta oscillations and perceptual temporal precision, as, as we uh, think. So we, we, um, as in we, we think that we were able to show that beta band oscillations subserve neural, neural mechanisms that are responsible for top-down predictions regarding the temporal precision of sounds and that are embedded in the lead sequences and the lead sequence. And these beta oscillations might be involved in the active top-down control during neural entrainment to rhythmic events. And the results so, so far are in line with the active sensing framework and studies relating beta activity with lead perception and temporal predictions. Um, there's a preprint online on BioArchive and I would like to thank you and my colleagues who are involved <laughs> in the study. <laughs> Thank you, Sabine. So now we have time for questions. Thank you very much for the presentation. Have you done or are you planning any source estimation uh, under EEG data? Yeah. What would you expect? Hmm. Yeah, it would be, of course, it would be very interesting to see if this really originates from motor and auditory regions. So um, we could, um, so with the data we have, we could, uh, we could uh, try to source localize the data. Um, it is, um, it might be a bit tricky since we don't have the individual sensor locations. So it would be more like a <laughs> first <laughs> impression of where this activity might come from. So yeah, uh, I think, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I find it really interesting, uh, the study that you've done. Uh, could you also maybe say a bit more about this, the relationship between the EEG and the behavior? You show that there was a correlation there. What does it, um, what was it, the meaning, uh, um, in a sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, so, um, so we correlated um, better power in the last time interval with uh, D prime measures, so with the perceptual sensitivity. And this positive correlation means that um, the higher the performance, the higher uh, the mm, better power contrast. So yeah, I maybe I did not explain this well enough. So we, we, we correlate actually the difference between the high precision and the low precision condition. So this is 
the beta power effect for each participant correlated with the behavioral performance of the participant. So it shows that the more, the more it's modulated, the more, uh, the better they perform in the delay detection. Mm. Very interesting. If there are no other questions, then I think we can end the session and go, I guess we'll go for break, is it? Food photo, okay, yeah, great. Yeah, so if, uh, yes. <laughs>